Hey, this is Colby Carpenter with SciTech South Mississippi, and today we're going to do a short video on how to load files in Trimble SiteWorks. So I'm just going to start by creating a new project. I'm going to come through and I'm going to check all of my units, uh, just make sure that these are set the way I want them. So check my distances, angles, coordinate order, grid coordinates, azimuth, and my stationing. Um, this, these will be the units that cover the entirety of the project, so be sure you have those how you want them here. We're going to hit next. So this is our project creation options page. Um, this essentially will be the backdrop for your entire project. So anything you load right here will be the background um, no matter however many designs you load in this project. These files will continue to be the background so unless I've got an actual background map that I want to hold true over the entire project um, I will just load control points right here so I'm gonna come here where it's looking right now is just on the C drive of my computer which is just the main internal drive so I'm gonna drop that down I've got all my files stored right here on my thumb drive so in a real-world scenario this is replicating having a USB thumb drive plugged into my tablet. I'm going to select the thumb drive there. You can see what type of file it's looking for. So the system is actually looking for a CSV type file. Um, you'll see down here we've got the name of the file, what size, type, and when the last date it was modified. So you can see under the type I've got folders and specific files. So with this um, looking for a CSV type file that's all it's going to display unless it's inside a folder. I can always click on the folder, open that up, and it's also looking for a CSV in there. Um, however you store these on your thumb drive, just be sure you know how to locate your CSV file there. So I'm going to select that and accept. Um, and that's all I'm going to load here. Um, like I said, if I had a project map, I would load it the same way. I don't have one for this particular project, so I'm going to hit finish. I'm going to create a generic work order, call it layout, and then I'm going to go ahead and create a new design. So you can have as many designs in a project as you need. Uh, most folks will have a finished grade, a subgrade, a drainage file, um, whatever is needed to get the project done. So for this particular instance, I'm going to say this is a finished grade model. Same process. We're going to check the select design file. Tap to select file. Again, I'm looking on my USB drive. It's looking for a design file. I've got my TTM right here. I stored it just on the root directory of my thumb drive, so I know that's my file right there. Accept that. I'm going to do the same thing for line work. There's my DXF file. Once I have those two complete, um, if I have stakeout points, I can load those here. It's the same as a control file, um, CSV type file, except SiteWorks realizes that they're stakeout points as opposed to control, so you'll get different symbols inside of SiteWorks, um, and you can perform different actions, things like that, by using stakeout points as opposed to control. So don't have any for this project, so I'm just going to go on past that and hit finish. Now I've got a design. If I had another design, like a drainage file or a subgrade file, I could go ahead and load that right here. Um, same exact process, just load your new files. I don't have one this time, so I'm going to hit accept. I'm just going to X out of that and come into my project, and there you have it. Um, I've got a 3D surface, that's my TTM file. I've got line work. That's my DXF, and I've got control points, which came in from my CSV file.